right, welcome back. This is chapter two, vision, mission, and objectives. These are three key things that you need to know about. Again, we're just still kind of talking philosophical, but it's going to get a little more practical in this chapter. Um, so hopefully we're going to give you those skills and these little roadmaps that are going to help you do these things. All right, let's talk about a vision statement. Lord, help me. See, back in the day, we didn't have vision statements. We had mission statements, and that was basically it. And maybe that was a bad thing because, you know, a lot of times it didn't work. <clears throat> Here's what a vision statement is. A vision statement generally communicates a general idea of where we are going to both personnel and investors. It points an organization in the right direction and kind of leads them in their approach to help them chart a strategic path for the future. Now think about that. A vision statement kind of points where I want to go why do we need that? Let me go back to my story about my beach house. I didn't have a vision. I wanted a beach house. I would love to have a beach house right now. I never had a vision. I never saw it. I never believed it could happen. So I was never pointed in the right direction. I was always going somewhere else. My roommate in college was pointing toward that beach house his whole life. So a vision statement basically just gets me pointed where I need to be going. That is crucial. Absolutely crucial. I agree. It's, it's very uh, big and amorphic and well, what do you mean by that? You just sound like some kind of hippie. How you be a hippie? Get outside that box. This is where, this is kind of the direction we want to go. Because if you never say that, you never think that, you will never move in that direction. So have enough courage to say, here's where I want to go. If you don't want to go there, don't say it. But once you determine this is where I'd like to go, don't ever back off and go, ah, I just don't want to be there. God, this thing. I just don't want to be there. So always, if you want to be there, go. Get a vision. Go. Now we're coming to something that you do know. The mission statement. Yeah, we've all heard of mission statements. We've heard of it so much we ignore it. We don't even think about it. Well, it's very important. It can be very important to you as a manager to get your employees to do what you need them to do. It's not something that's a plaque on the wall. It is a management tool that you can use if you understand what it is. So here's what it is. A mission statement tells all constituents, everybody, who we are, why we're here, and what we do. It must be short and easily memorized. Mission statement is like a mantra. All right, what's a mantra? I'm not getting into religion, but the Christian faith has the Apostle Creed. And it starts, I believe, and then blah, 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 blah. And the reason they have that, and the reason they say it in every church, is because I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to forget what you believe. Okay, now, <clears throat> you might not really believe it, but I want you to at least have the ability to say, this is what I said I believe, but I don't. They want you to know what you said you believe. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Da, da. They want you to know, and to the Republic for which it stands. They want you to know what you think you believe in. That's what a mission statement is. It must be short, and it must be able to be memorized. And here's why. <clears throat> I apologize. But the mission statement of the U.S. Uh, University of South Carolina Aiken is a page and a half long. <clears throat> it's the very front of our bulletin. The University of South Carolina Aiken, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what it says. The reason I don't know what it says is because it's a page and a half long. None of our faculty <clears throat> knows what it says. None of our students know what it says. Because it's too long. I can't, if you can't memorize it, it does not exist. 
You can say, yeah, we got one. You say, well, what is it? I don't know. You don't, then it does not exist to you. If you don't know what it says, it does not exist. Here's what a mission statement is supposed to do. A mission statement is supposed to drive your behavior. It's supposed to drive your behavior. Okay, so if you say it and you believe it, it should drive your behavior. <clears throat> Good example of a very well-known mission statement. In fact, it's so well known, everybody knows it, not just the company. They use it in their commercial. Ford, there were commercials years ago, they need to bring them back. At Ford, quality is job one. Everybody knew that. Now what does that tell everybody? Well that tells, hopefully, <clears throat> the guy working on the line, <clears throat> excuse me, at Ford, that everything I do needs to be 100% quality. At least that needs to be my attempt to make it as good as I can possibly make it. So that when I see something come by that's not right, I stop the line, pull that cord and stop the line. I, that needs to just be like a religion in me. I need to do that. Thou shalt not steal. Me and you go into stores every day. Me and you could steal every day and probably get away with it. Why don't we? Because we were taught, don't, thou shalt, you, don't steal. That's part of our mission statement. So at Ford, quality is job one. No matter what you do, whether it's buying toilet paper or putting engines in, you do it with as good a quality as you can possibly do. So a mission statement should drive your behavior. To drive your behavior, it needs to be short and sweet. And, <clears throat> and the mission statement has two other components. Number one, it's got to be learned. You have to teach the mission statement. You can't just say, well, I thought you knew what the mission statement here was. No, put it on the wall. At every meeting, it needs to be in one of the PowerPoint slides. Here's our mission, just in case you forgot. And it needs to be so short that you can just put it up and go, okay, y'all got it, and we're moving on. If they have to sit there and read it, it's too long. It's, 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 out, of, it's, out, of, it's out, of, out of, it's crazy. All right, so um, do y'all understand the mission statement? You think you got that? Man, are you guys okay? I mean, God, I know this is exciting stuff, but y'all just need to calm down. That's that's crazy. Uh, I don't want nobody getting hurt. And um, gee, that had to hurt. Are you all right? Golly, anyway, so y'all just calm down. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. All right. Remember, this chapter was about vision, mission and objectives. Remember I told you that? All my lists start out broad, vision, where do we want to go? Let's be a hippie. Down to mission, okay, describe what I do. What are my values? What do I believe in down to here? All right, given that, where do I want to go? What are my objectives? This is a definition of objectives. <clears throat> we use it wrong all the time. I hope after today, you personally, in your personal life, will use this definition of objectives. This is why I don't have a beach house, because I did not have an objective that followed this rule. I played around with it. I don't want a beach house. I never thought about it. If I'd use this as a chance, I had a beach house. This is what objective is. Objectives must be specific, quantifiable, or measurable and contain a deadline for achievement. My roommate did that. He said, I want a beach house, specific. And I'll know it when I am living in it. And I want it by this day. He, he didn't wait around. He said, I want it by the time I'm 24. Well, he had him a beach house at 24. He couldn't use it in the summer, et cetera, but he had a beach house. That's how smart he was. Objectives, specific, quantifiable, measurable, and contain a deadline for achievement. All right, so I'm gonna get a little more specific. Me and you as managers give deadlines all the time. Excuse me, we give objectives all the time. We go to our work staff and we go, here's an objective I want you to do. 
And then later on we go, I can't understand why we didn't meet our objective. I don't know what, and here's why, because you messed up. Yes, you did, you did it wrong. If you give anybody an objective, somebody else or yourself, it has to contain these four elements. If it does not, it will not work. It's not worth the paper it's written on or the area you use to speak it. You have to give these four things. So here are the four things that an objective must contain. Number one, attribute salt. That's fancy for what it is you want. So in our example, attribute salt, I want an increase in sales. So number one, increase in sales. Second thing you need to give them is an index for measuring progress. So number one, I want an increase in sales. Number two, over last year. Now, let's take a little sidebar here. Last year might not be a good index. If last year was the worst year I ever had, using that as an index means this year I can just skate along and still meet my objectives. If last year was the best year you've ever had, you're asking almost the impossible out of your workforce. So a one year index on sales or assets or any kind of product, any kind of numbers like that, maybe not so good. Maybe a five year, last five years, 10 year rolling index. You want it to be, an, a, an objective must be difficult to accomplish, but it must be accomplishable. I don't even know if that's a word. You give somebody that's in something that's impossible, they won't do a thing. They're smarter than that. So find a good index. Right now we're going to pretend last year was as average as you could get. So I want an increase in sales, number one. Number two, over last year's sales, there's my index. Number three, and I want that increase to be equal to eight million dollars in sales. I want an increase in eight million dollars in sales. An increase in eight million dollars in sales. Or you could say I want an increase in 10 percent over last year. You can give it a percentage, you can give it a raw dollar amount. The only point is I'm trying, you're doing this for a motivation reason. We'll talk about that in a minute. So number one, I want an increase in sales compared to last year by this much, 10% increase, or I want it to total $8 million, whatever. The fourth thing you got to give them is a time frame for accomplishing that task. So by the end of the year, over the next 12 months, by the way, that's a short-term objective where Americans are terrible at that. We have a short-term vision. Uh, we need to get kind of out of that rut, but we'll talk about that later. So I want an increase in sale, number one. Number two, I want to compare that, an increase over last year's sales. Number three, I want that to increase to be 10%. And number four, I want that to happen within the next 12 months. See, here's the beautiful thing about that. I now that can take that to my workforce, and the workforce, if I treat them right and they have respect, can look at me and go, yeah, I think we can do that. That's, that might be tough. But, or they can look at you and go, boss, man, that is not going to work at all. Did you realize that blunt, 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 and maybe you didn't. So this gives them a chance to react to that. Use that information. Don't, I, know, I know people that every time the employees go, oh, they go, I'm just an employee. They hate work. That is not the case. These are some smart people. You need to listen to them. You know, they're not all lazy. You need to listen to them. And if one of them really knows and has an idea, you need to listen to him. All right, 10% might not be good. How about 8%? Yeah, I think we can do 8%. Big deal. Make it 8%. So, daggum, use, use the information that you get. Uh, use that reaction that you get when you give people these objectives. But every objective you ever give has to give those three, those four things. It has to be. You cannot do it without it. You cannot do it without it. So, we've talked about a lot of things in this, this course, this uh, section. We talked about vision statements, mission statements, and objectives. Those are key. We're still kind of philosophical, even though we got a little finite with the objectives. And a lot of you go, we need a mission statement. Well, it's just kind of stupid, you know. No, it's not. 
A mission statement is like the Apostles' Creed. A mission statement is like the this, this Pledge of Allegiance. It's just like that. This is what I believe. This is what I is who I am. And the reason we do that over and over and over again because we forget. We want to be so short that I can memorize it so at least I can say it anytime I want to. But you as a manager need to lead that statement. Mission statement needs to be up everywhere. It needs to be on the board in big letters that you can read it across the room. It needs to be a PowerPoint in every presentation you ever get. In fact, start it off with, just want to remind you, here's our mission statement. We're getting ready to talk about a new thing we're going to do, but as we're thinking about this new thing, it's all couched in this mission statement. you got to do that. All right, read the book, like I said. Take those daily quizzes. Everything's going to be good, those chapter quizzes. Uh, email me if you got a problem. Uh, this is cool. Uh, they're going to run me out of here. This is a great building. What do you all think? We had to rent this. This is impossible. You ain't believe how much it costs to rent this building. Anyway, uh, peace. You all have a good time. Let me know what's going on. Bye.